Hello and welcome to Unstitches. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Singer buttonhole attachment. This is number 8662 and this video will also cover this model here which is basically just a facelift model and that is number 86718 model. Uh, identical basically except they look slightly different and uh, a different colour scheme and they have the newer one has knobs on it instead of wing nuts. So this video is a basics video, we'll cover both of these units here. I'll be demonstrating the buttonholer on this lovely Singer 15K 1939 with the lovely Sphinx decals here. I've got a unit already attached but uh, I'll remove that and show you how to install the buttonhole unit and some of the basic operations of the of the attachment. You may have seen my previous video on how to maintain these units and so if you've picked up one of these in the wild and you're just not too sure what sort of state it's in or you think it may need attention take a look at my uh, maintenance video that uh, I've put out recently as well and it covers both of these units so let's get down for a closer look at how to install the unit and use it. And you can produce buttonholes like this on it. Nice little buttonholes. Uh, it supports buttonhole sizes or lengths from 3 8 to 1 inch. You can also adjust the uh, what's called the bite, which is the width of the little zigzag stitching you can see there. And you can also adjust the cutting gap there, that's the, uh, the gap in between the rows of stitching there. And you can adjust the density. As far as uh, supported machines, any low shank singer really should do the trick, you know the older style. Uh, the key to it is not just the low shank but there's also a little driver on the needle bar which will, I'll get you in closer to have a look at that in a second. I mean it may fit even modern low, low shank machines as long as it's got the correct driver here you know that could be difficult to match up not sure. Okay before we do anything here we need to uh, move the cutter up so if you've got a 15k or a 128k you move this cutter up out of the way here basically get it as high as you can right up like that if you own a 99k or a 221 or a 222k featherweight machine uh, it's recommended to remove the cutter so what you would do in that case is you would remove your press foot which we have to do anyway and the mounting screw because we use a different mounting screw for the attachment and then you know you'd push this down and bring it right off you know take the cutter right off if you have those models you just want to make sure there's a little bit of space there for the press foot to lift there and then the next thing to do is to attach the this plate now I find on this particular model the left hand screw hole here is good and a little tip if you've already got your machine threaded I find it easier at this stage to get the bobbin thread which is white on this machine here at the moment and feed that up from under the plate so just bring it up through there and that just saves you bringing up your bobbin thread that doesn't matter too much if you haven't already brought your bobbin thread up that's just a handy little time saving tip there and then we basically want to screw this down uh, the camera is not looking directly down so you won't be able to see the hole but basically where the needle goes down there you want that to be centralized in this and this hole here pretty well central in both uh, directions if you know what I mean for front to back and left to right and then the key is to get these tight you don't want this to be moving and once you've got it in position give it a just screw it down until it's tight okay so it's not moving there just double check that you've got clearance 
give that a good tighten and then check it. You don't want that to be uh, this plate to be moving back and forward here. Now once you have your uh, plate on there, it's time to install the unit and I find it easier if so you bring your needle pretty much to the top there and then I bring this lever up here it makes it a lot easier to get on and the key is that this little fork has to go over this little clamp here and at the same time uh, this here has to mount onto the foot bar uh, this part here with the hole in it's where your screw goes and I find just tilting the unit slightly like that makes it very easy and then you just make sure that's the little forks over there and then you just line up the hole for your mounting screw and you use the long mounting screw supplied with the buttonhole attachment and then just screw that in and I would recommend using a screwdriver to tighten that you don't want that rattling around or coming loose there okay so now we are set now as far as marking the buttonhole goes let's say this is you know the edge of your garment here let's say this is like a shirt placket here and that that edge there I've just folded over uh, the what you do to mark your buttonhole not with a pen on your garment but just some sort of marker that's going to you know wash off or disappear chalk or whatever you might want to use basting stitches or something like that but I'm just going to use a pen here just to give you the idea as you would mark your buttonhole like such and this here is the clo is closer to the edge of the garment here okay and when you're positioning the unit you turn the uh, you turn the thumb screw at the back on the side here in operating direction there's an arrow on there and you'll see that the the unit is moving back and forward there I haven't got the foot down so we're just sort of free there what you're best off doing is you turn this here until this here comes out you can tell when it's about to change direction because this will move to the left slightly just like that so that's at uh, this point here on the buttonhole okay and you, so you put your material to be sewn under here and then you can just bring your needle down just slightly almost as a as a pointer and when you put the press foot down you let it go quite quickly and that clamps this down quite nicely now you can see there that I mean the camera is on a slight angle there just bring the camera over a little bit you can see there that it's not quite centered in the hole uh, you can adjust where the fabric is in the in the hole there it's going to be a little bit of trial and error but what you can do is you can actually take the unit through its cycle like so you can get a rough idea I would say uh, so you would line up the center of your buttonhole with these lines here that line there through here that line there about there you see it's not quite lined up you could use a little ruler or something to line that up perfectly you know you can see there that it's going to take a little bit of trial and error I would recommend having a wee play on a test piece of material try and replicate your garment as much as close as possible I think that's probably about right we may have to make some adjustments here but you get the idea and we'll start off just slowly here recommended to go quite slow 
when you're doing this as well. Uh, but you know, I'm using an electric machine here, so it can sometimes tend to get away. But it is quite central there, you can see. It's reasonably good. Tension probably needs adjusting a little bit there. It might be a little bit tight on the tension. Could probably increase the bobbin tension slightly there. Uh, but let's just have a wee look. Yeah, bobbin tension's coming through. Tension's not quite 100%. You don't have to start at the top of the buttonhole as such. You can, if you wanted to, you could start halfway through or at this end. But the recommendation is to start at uh, the edge closest to the edge of the material uh, for strength. Drop that down. And I might just try and get a bit more consistent speed here. I've just changed the bobbin thread there. I uh, was just starting to run out. But if you do do that, you can just draw your thread up, bobbin thread, as you normally would. Just a different colour. I've got black here. And then I would just trim that off reasonably short and make a start here. Let's just make sure we're at the right end of the cycle there. Drop that down. That's looking a lot better. Now I'm using a modern, uh, what am I using, Gutemann 100% uh, polyester. The recommendation in the manual, though it's probably a little bit more difficult to find threads like that anymore, is a mercerized cotton. Uh, and I do have some mercerized cotton here. I've got this old spool. And on the bobbin, I've actually got black. You know, you definitely uh, want to use something that matches your garment. Uh, but, you know, you can use like what they call a bobbin thread on there. So it's a, a fine uh, thread on the bobbin. It's looking pretty good there, I think. If you want to make your buttonhole look a little bit better, you can actually go around twice. Not really supposed to speed like that either. Uh, but, you know, just for the sake of this video. <laughs> So go second time around. And you can see that actually makes a really nice little buttonhole there. Really nice. So I'll be adjusting the bite wide and narrow here and the space wide and narrow and I'll explain that in a second. So let's take a wee look at the different adjustments here of these two to get your different types of buttonhole. Now if we have a look down the uh, side here, we've got this adjustment here and that says bite. Okay, now the bite is the distance, or the width of the zigzag basically. So you can see the zigzag coming down here on the left side and then you've got the zigzag coming up the right. It's the width of each uh, of the bars. So if I increase the bite, just undo the wing nut there and we've got wide there and narrow down the back. So if I go wider, that's, that's actually the maximum width there. Now you do have to be uh, bear in mind that if you increase the width of the bite, uh, that it may narrow the cutting uh, distance, which is called the space. That's the distance between each of the rows there, that where you would cut the buttonhole. Well, let's do a little test run. Quite a bit wider.
and you'll see that it's now too wide. Well, it's not too wide, the cutting space is too narrow. So you can see there that that is not a very good buttonhole. Not enough space to cut the buttonhole. Now, it's probably better if you start at the top of the buttonhole as well. We've got a join down here. Looks a little bit messy, but just for testing, uh, that's fine. So what we can do is we can, if we take a look down the back there, we've got an adjustment called space, and let's bring that right up to the widest space available there. So we're on the widest bite, the widest space. See whether that's going to give us what we want here. I would say just, just at the limit of the actual button holder in both respects as far as bite and cutting width. So there's not much cutting space in there. So the only thing really to do from there would be to drop the, uh, the bite down a little bit. So just bring that back just a fraction there. looking a lot better there. So you can have a little play with you know bite width cutting space things like that. Now if we go uh, for a narrow bite I'll just take the bite down to a narrow if I take it right to the narrowest I think it just basically does like a strip almost like a straight stitch. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah, so hardly any zigzag there at all. Yeah, <laughs> and we've got a very wide bite, uh, very wide space, sorry, narrow bite, wide space. Sorry about all these tails hanging out here. Uh, just bring the bite up slightly. Let's get a fairly narrow bite going here, but certainly not uh, completely straight like that last one. So now you can see we've got a narrow bite, uh, but a very wide cutting space, so miles too wide. So what we can do is can get the space adjustment and take that back to somewhere closer to narrow. There's one, two, three, four, five. So it's the first division back from the narrowest. Yes. Not enough space. Oh, I'm going to run off the end there. Let's start that again. I'm just going to give it a little bit more space coming back towards the wider. Get you in a little bit closer there. And you can see there that that's pretty good there. You know, that's a pretty good space, amount of space there. Nice narrow bite. And that gives you a nicer finish there. Now to change the length of the buttonhole we have an adjustment at the back here that is uh, long down the bottom, there's an L down here, and S up here for short. Okay, so if we want to make the buttonhole shorter, bring that up, and the buttonholer will do, if 
from 3 8 of an inch to 1 inch without any uh, jiggery pokery but if you want longer than 1 inch you do have to use a special method for the longer buttonholes which I won't go through in this video I'll leave that for a more advanced uh, video there but let's just have a look at the length of this now okay so there we go quite a bit shorter buttonhole there compared to the ones that we've been doing just this one here okay i would probably uh narrow the distance or shorten the stitch length to make that look a little bit better okay so you can see there how easy it is to change the length of the buttonhole now on the side of the unit you know it's it's mounted like this here as you can see uh, but if we have a close look here you can see where we've got this adjustment here and with a screwdriver there you can just adjust that that one's a bit tight this hasn't been serviced for long and there's an M in there for medium and S over there for short this definitely needs servicing that's quite tight although I'm loosening it just by doing that okay so that gives you your different uh, densities of stitch as such so on my one here that is set to medium at the moment so I'm going to bring it closer to short effectively I just adjusted it like this I brought that closer to short there for shorter stitch length and let's see what sort of effect that'll have just uh, trim that tail there Now if I was getting very fussy with you know my two colours I've got contrasting basically contrasting threads here I've got the orangey colour on the top and the black on the bottom you can see the black just coming up from the bottom I'd be tempted to just tighten the bobbin tension slightly I, I won't do it just now uh, but you know if I was sewing a garment and you know I was getting this result here I'd certainly be look at looking at uh, fine tuning that tension there I've just put the length back up and I'm going to screw the screw the other way so what I've done on the unit is I've gone maximum L like that right onto the stopper let's see what sort of effect that has adjusted that to medium again because I can't really tell the difference there let's have another look here oh yeah yep yeah there is a difference so that's medium that's long and that's short but not uh, as in I'm talking stitch length not the length of the buttonhole uh, this is the shortest stitch length here, denser stitching. Not quite on the shortest you can put it on, but I wouldn't want to go any shorter than that anyway. That's it for this video. Keep an eye out for another video where I'll go through uh, whip stitch, purl, you can have a wee read there as a little spoiler, and also uh, longer than one inch buttonholes as well. So it's more sort of advanced functions there. So yeah, keep an eye out for that, and thank you very much for watching, and as always, thank you very much to my patrons.